conditions mean for monetary policy? I have described the growth, you know, the growth conditions. I have described the uh, inflation conditions. Now, what do all these factors mean for monetary policy? And that is what I would like to now highlight. The near-term inflation and growth outcomes in India have turned somewhat adverse since the last monetary policy in October. The medium-term prognosis on inflation suggests further alignment with the target, while growth is expected to pick up its momentum. Persistent high inflation reduces the purchasing power of consumers and adversely affects both consumption and investment demand. The overall implication of these factors for growth is negative. Therefore, price stability is essential for sustained growth. On the other hand, a growth slowdown, if it lingers beyond a point, may need policy support. The Reserve Bank's anti-inflationary monetary policy stance has been a crucial factor in bringing about a significant disinflation. Going forward, as food price shocks wane, headline inflation is expected to ease and realign with the target as per our projections, which I just read out. At present, it is necessary to draw on the flexibility provided by the neutral stance of monetary policy to wait, to wait for and monitor the incoming data for confirmation of the decline in, decline in inflation. The gains achieved so far in the broad direction of disinflation, notwithstanding the recent upticks, need to be preserved. At the same time, the growth trajectory and the evolving outlook also need to be monitored very closely. At this critical juncture, prudence and practicality demand that we remain careful and sensitive to the dynamically evolving situation with all its complexities and ramifications. A status quo in monetary policy in this meeting of the MPC has thus become appropriate and essential. I would now like to turn to liquidity and financial market conditions. System liquidity as represented by the net position under the LAF, that is net LAF, that is net uh, liquidity adjustment facility, it continued to remain in surplus during October and November on account of higher government spending, despite a significant increase in currency in circulation during the festive season and capital flows. Of course, towards the end of November, for a few days, the liquidity became tight. But overall, I think uh, there was adequate liquidity both in uh, October and November, and it remained in surplus. Given these conditions, the Reserve Bank mainly conducted variable rate reverse repo operations, that is VRRR operations, to absorb surplus liquidity, to alleviate temporary liquidity tightness because of large GST outflows. However, fine-tuning variable rate repo operations, that is VRR, VRR operations, were conducted intermittently during October and November. The two-way liquidity operations of the Reserve Bank ensured close alignment of the interbank overnight rate with the policy repo rate. Transmission to the credit market has been satisfactory. As you would have noticed, as in the previous, uh, as in the previous monetary policy statements, a lot of data is given in the footnotes. So those of you who are interested may have a look at the footnotes because the data in the footnotes justify and back up whatever I am saying as a part of my statement. Now, even as liquidity in the banking system remains adequate, system liquidity may tighten in the coming months due to tax outflows, increase in currency in circulation, and volatility in capital flows. To ease the potential liquidity stress, it has now been decided to reduce the cash reserve ratio, that is to reduce the CRR of all banks to 4% of net and time demand, net demand and time liabilities, that is NDTL. And this will be done in two tranches, two equal tranches of 25 basis points each with effect from the fortnight beginning December 14th and December 28th. 
This will restore the CRR to 4% of NDTL, which was in fact the prevailing, which was the prevailing rate before commencement of the policy tightening cycle in April 2022. The reduction in CRR is consistent with the neutral policy stance and would increase primary liquidity of about rupees 1.16 lakh crore, that is 1 lakh 16,000 crore to the banking system. Going forward, the Reserve Bank will continue to be nimble and proactive in its liquidity management operations to ensure that money market interest rates evolve in an orderly manner and the productive requirements of the economy are met. During 2024-25, that is from the period April to November, the Indian rupee depreciated by 1.3%, largely due to pressure from strengthening US dollar and selling pressure by foreign portfolio investors, especially in October and November. Nevertheless, both the depreciation of the Indian rupee and its volatility was less compared to its EME peers. And this reflects India's strong macroeconomic fundamentals and improvement in the external sector outlook.